Hi, Mike and Arlen. Our Philippine journey. Yeah, the box is still back there. We're hoping to get to it today. Look, legal documents, legal obligations, entering into a contract, notaries. These are just a few of the things that we're going to talk about that you should know about or at least be aware of. And some of the major problems with those situations. Let's talk about it. I never got it what you had to go. I guess this world's too slow for you. I think there's beauty in the gray, the cold, but you just want to go. And there's no way I can beat it, cause I got no chance, no chance when it comes to her. She got the glitter and the fame, and I wasn't enough. Okay, a lot of information. Try to put it in a limited amount of time. First off, contractual agreements. Contractual agreements in the Philippines are really not what you are used to in the West. Um, when you enter into, and, and I say this only because uh, I'm looking particularly at leases, all right? Home leases, um, uh, uh, we won't even go into property leases, but home leases, condo leases, rental agreements, okay? Uh, when you are leasing a home, odds are that that home is being leased by a Filipino. And they go and get lease agreements from wherever or whatever they throw in whatever or not and it's really not a in-depth thorough thing i would recommend you do a couple of things all right because i know here's what really happens what really happens is is you're lazy all right expats just don't and i don't understand it I can tell you that 99% of the friends that we have never had their lease agreement reviewed by an attorney. And they had all kinds of reasons that they stated, you know. Um, we knew the person. We knew we had a friend that had a lease with them as well. Never had a problem. Okay, then do the minimum amount. The minimum amount is a start date, an end date terms okay go through everything take a look at a, at a u.s lease agreement and start highlighting the things that are in there and then you could probably throw it in the trash because you won't be able to negotiate most of what you want to put in there um i caution a lot of people especially on issues of airbnb and condo rentals um when you're renting through an agency, not directly, but through an agency like Airbnb or anybody else, the information provided on that site is what the person that's renting it has put there. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, we had a subscriber who wanted us to check on um, this rental over at one of the candy properties. Okay, great. We can take a look at it on Airbnb. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look and see what we think about it, um, which unit it is and everything. I mean, it wasn't like he wanted to look at the agreement. But one of the things that we noticed when we were going through it is it said pets were allowed. Well, I can tell you right now. None of the candy properties allow pets at all. You can't even have a lizard, uh, you know, by their agreement. So what happens is, is upon check-in at some of these Airbnbs. Now, in, in Manila, it seems to be a little bit better. When we do like an Airbnb in Manila, when we check in, we're checking in nine times out of ten. We're checking in at the front office 
front desk of the um, tower property. All right. And they're going to give you another piece of paper which shows you their rules. And their rules may not be the rules that were on the Airbnb disclosure. Now, that goes along. That Just take that idea and apply it across the board. That's the first issue. The second issue, when you're entering into an agreement, who are you entering into that agreement with? I've seen people, uh, for instance, buying and selling vehicles. Buying and selling vehicles. I've seen a bill of sale that was like written on a piece of paper by hand and two people sign it. Okay. There's no notary. There's nothing. Do your due diligence. Now, like we've said before, we are not attorneys. We cannot give you legal advice and you would be an idiot to take direct legal advice from us. Hire an attorney. In fact, for those of you that are going to go out and hire one, here in Angeles City, there are many. Right on Fields Avenue, there's a guy that does basic legal and notarizations. Okay? He's right there on Fields Ave, right in the midst of all the little stores um, before you get to, to Walking Street. He's only there a couple of days a week, a couple of hours, mostly by appointment. All right? Either way, getting that done. Now, all of that leads to this, notarization. There are going to be times when you want notarization. And then there are going to be times when you want an apostille. Okay, so an apostille. An apostille is like an international notary. And you have to be a party to, or the country that you're in, which the Philippines is, has to be a party to the International Apostille Convention, all right? And that is then accepted as an official document, all right? So you want something notarized in the here in the Philippines, you have to get apostilled, and we're going to tell you about that. But before you get it apostilled, before you screw up, there's another problem. The next problem is, is your notary itself. Now, we have been told although we've never been able to find it in writing, that only lawyers are notaries. Now, I have been told that there are notaries that are not lawyers. Okay, great. So when you want something notarized here, let's say you take it to some place that's going to do the notary. All right, good. You're on the right step. The Philippines has such a corrupt history and ongoing lack of enforcement with notarization that you now need to check, is that notary good? All right, how do you do that? Well, you're going to get his information. Here in Angeles, now I don't know if they do this everywhere. We think they do. We were told they do, okay? But you can go to City Hall, all right, and you can give them the information of the notary. And then you can say, is this guy valid? Because there are guys out there that are acting as notaries with fake stamps. They make their own stamps. They do whatever. It's just bullshit scamming, all right? That document will never pass an apostille. So you go to City Hall. We've done this. You give them the information. In fact, before you get a document apostille, you have to get a letter from the authority that covers that, which is at City Hall here in Angeles, okay? And find out, are they a legitimate notary? So an apostille. Previously, years ago, and still even to this day, they will call an official document certified by the Philippine government to be official a red ribbon because they used to put a red ribbon on the document, attach it, all right? But now it's an apostille, okay? Because it's part of the International Apostille Convention. 
And you can do this actually in America as well if you're trying to get things done that need official recognition here in the Philippines. So you'll go and you'll get an apostille. How do you do it? Well, you can hire an attorney and they're going to do exactly what you can do. And you're going to have to do some of the legwork anyway. So what that means is, until recently, if you were in Angeles, you would have to go to San Fernando, to the mall in San Fernando, I forget what the name of it is, and there is a Department of Foreign Affairs, the DFA. You go in, you fill out the paperwork, you tell them you wanted apostilled, you pay your fee, and I think we waited three days, came back, and our documents are apostilled. Okay, that means that they are accepted by any notary or legal issue here in the Philippines and in America or any other country that recognizes the International Apostille Convention. In America, you can do the same thing. There are places you can Google it, you can go online. You know, we sold some property that ex-wife number two and I jointly owned down in Mexico. And we had to have that apostilled because we weren't going to go to Mexico. I wasn't going to fly back to Mexico to sell it. And she wasn't going to fly down to Mexico to do it either. There are companies that do it. It took about 10 days. Cost us about 250 bucks U.S., to get that done, and it was apostilled. You can get documents done like that here, and you can get documents done like that there uh, in the U.S. That document now becomes valid legal document in the Philippines. It's legally binding. Um, so, you know, you've got to get and do yourself a favor. Check out what it is you're getting yourself into, all right? See, you know, we see so many expats that don't do that. At a minimum, at a minimum, choose an attorney that's reputable and have him notarize documentation. At a minimum, choose an attorney, have him review your lease. In addition to reviewing your lease, Have him recommend any changes. And again, now the fees start to add up. I'm going to be honest with you. All right. It may end up costing you three, four hundred bucks in the end. But you've got that as a boilerplate for the next go round. Now, there's a whole lot more to this than I say. And if you'll comment below, I'll try and answer more questions about it and maybe even expand on it. So, with that being said, we hope you found this informative. We hope you enjoyed it. Please do consider subscribing and hit that thumbs up. And we thank you very much. Take care.